we have the abdominal aorta, which you already saw when you were doing the, the blood vessels, and the inferior vena cava. And you can see coming off of those, the renal artery and vein on both sides. Okay, so that's really obvious. Here are the adrenal glands, the kidney, the two ureters going into the bladder. Now, I want you to notice something because this, uh, this is the best model for some of the male reproductive uh, structures. So this is the vas deferens or spermatic cord. Here you have the seminal vesicles. And down here at the bottom, at the base of the bladder, you have the prostate gland. Now I'm going to just push this aside so that you can see the inside of this bladder. And when you look at the inside of the bladder, you see the urethra. So you have two ureters and one urethra. And you can see that that prostate gland in the male essentially surrounds the urethra. And when we get to the reproductive system, we'll talk about that. Now, in ANP1, we learned about transitional epithelium and the fact that its name, transitional, means that it's not quite epithelial and it's not muscular. It stretches, and you find that in the ureters and also in the bladder. And, and you find it there because, remember, you never, ever, ever stop making urine. You're making it all the time. So all of these structures, the ureters and the bladder, can stretch except in one place, and that's this white area right here, which is called the trigon. All right? This trigon doesn't allow for that stretching because what happens here is that the ureters, although you can't see the opening here for the ureters, the ureters enter here and you can see that the urethra goes out here and if this stretched you would have the possibility of closing off either the entrance or the exit to the bladder. Can't do that. Very bad. Okay? So that's this model. All right.